many times on earth, even Christians can be at fault for this. Child of God, this is important for us to understand this. We can be so consumed with what we think we're going to get from God that all we're focused on is that. And that's not what we're here to do. We're here to focus on the Lord. Amen. Amen. And Jesus said, they, they said, they said, well, what sign do you show us? Because God fed our forefathers in the desert with manna from heaven. And Jesus said, Moses didn't give you that bread from heaven. For I am the true bread that comes from heaven. And he said, this is, this is, and so they said, well, what work shall we do? He said, this is the work that you shall do. Believe in the one whom the Father has sent. That is the work of God, child God. To believe in the one that the Father has sent. I'm talking about the work of faith. Believing in God, believing in the one that he sent, believing that what Jesus came to do when he died on the cross was what you and I needed because we were separate from God because of the sin in our life. But the Father made a way and he sent Jesus to die to open up the door that we can have access to grace and that we can be healed. Amen. You know, I think that for a long time, I'm not trying to be judgmental, but I think for a long time in the church I had a wrong, I was taught a certain way and maybe I had a wrong understanding of how communion was really, what it all meant. And it was almost like, you know, before you took communion, you had to make sure that you had just repented of every single sin that you knew that you had committed. And every Sunday or every time you took communion, you had to keep doing the same thing. I got to tell you right now, brothers and sisters, they got a whole lot going on in our lives that sometimes we don't even recognize the sin. The way we talk to people, the way we act around people, things that are deep in our hearts. Lord, help us because if, if, we, if the Lord wasn't merciful and gracious, we'd, we'd be in a real bind. What I'm here to tell you this morning is this, is that the very reason that we can take communion is because of the, what Jesus has already done for us and how he's set us free. Now, with that said, let me say this. Amen. True Christianity, the true gospel of Jesus Christ, the true moving and operation of the Holy Spirit in our lives is going to reveal to our hearts the areas of our life that are not right with God. Yes, Lord. Right. Amen. And through that, God wants you and I to cooperate with him and to surrender those areas of our life. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Whenever, whenever the apostle Paul said on the night that he was betrayed, he told the church of Corinth this, and he, and he talked about them taking the body unworthily. Not so much because of the fact that you got sin or that you're in a fallen nature that that makes you unworthy. No. Sin made us all unworthy, but the blood of Jesus has made has redeemed us and made us worthy. The word unworthily is an adverb and it describes the way they were taking the Lord's body. They weren't recognizing what it really was, what it really considered, what it really meant. And what it really means whenever we take the Lord's body is the great magnitude of which Jesus, what he had to do. Listen, this is not just some little thing that we can let it bypass us. This isn't, look, look, look this is important that we understand, especially for the young people in the church. It's important that you understand if you're about to take communion, you need to understand the importance of this. Because I've been in churches before where it just seemed like it was just cracker and juice time. And I'm here to tell you it's not cracker and juice time. I'm here to tell you it's time to reference the work that God has done. And Jesus said, as often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me until I come back again. It's very important, hallelujah, that when we partake of this, when we take communion together as a congregation, that word communion means common union. You and I have a common union with one another. You know what it is? It's Jesus. And the way, the reason that we can have that common union is because of what Jesus did at the cross. And when we put our faith in that, it made us one body in Him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take communion together. Amen. Amen. Now listen, you gotta you gotta go ahead and you gotta get that cellophane part off of there. Amen. And this, Jesus said that this bread, that the bread represented his body that was going to be broken. Amen. There's a whole lot of Old Testament types that connect to that, the unleavened bread in the Old Testament. You know, you know the old unleavened bread in the Old Testament, you know what it meant? It meant that it had no yeast in it. And, and throughout the scriptures, yeast represents sin. And Jesus had no leaven in him. Amen. That, what that describes is his sinlessness. Jesus was the sinless one that came upon the earth to die 
for the sinful ones. Amen. Amen. So whenever we take this bread together, we remember that it was his body that was broken for us. It was his body that was slain for us. There's healing in what Jesus has done. Amen. He's a healer. He'll heal your mind. He'll heal, heal your physical body. He'll heal your emotions. I don't know what you've been through throughout your life. I don't know how others have treated you and the things that you've experienced. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus is a healer. He took stripes upon his back for our healing. He is the Lamb of God that came to heal us and to restore us to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I just ask that you would bless this bread as it represents your son that you sent for us. Lord, I pray that you would help us to remember the great, uh, the, the great act of his giving of his life for us and what that means for us, that we can have a relationship with you. Lord, I pray that you would bless this bread as we eat it together in remembrance of the sacrifice of our Lord. Yes. In the gospel story, the scripture teaches that Jesus said, this is the cup of the new covenant, the New Testament. You know, throughout the Old Testament, there was the shedding of animal blood. The book of Hebrews says that the blood of bulls and goats cannot remove sin. Those were just types and shadows that foretold the story. See, I don't know what you're going to do with this story about Jesus, but it's written. It's written throughout the annals of history. It's written right there in the scripture. You can't deny it. Even if you just turn on the TV for CNN, they got a little, little strip of land right there called Israel. If we're, if we're ignoring it, then we're pretending that it's not real. No, God is real and God has a plan. Amen. And he's, he's made it manifest upon this earth. Amen. Amen. Jesus said that this cup represented his blood. The blood of the new covenant. The blood yes, of the new testament. Yes, yes, yes. There's a new and living way to have a relationship with God. Amen. The beauty about New Testament Christianity is that it tells us that Jesus came from heaven to be with us. Amen. And he died on the cross so that we could be with him. Yes, yes. The shedding of his blood allows you and I to be with him. Amen. Listen to me. You, the, the, the doctors on earth are trying the best they can to help people out. Even if, yeah, I believe that. I mean, I believe that there's some corruption, but let's not get into all that right now. Nevertheless, for the most part, I believe that man wants to try to help man. But you got to understand something. There's also a problem with that because that's still the spirit of Babel. Man's going to help man. Man's going to fix man. Man's going to heal man. Man can't heal man. No, this is what heals man right here. This cup heals man. And it, it, because this cup represents the cross of Jesus Christ. And whenever you and I come into union with the plan of God, the plan of the Father, the Holy Spirit, like a medicine for your heart, your mind, your soul will bring healing for you. Amen? Father, we ask you to bless this cup. This cup that represents Calvary. This cup that represents the blood that was shed for each and every one of us. The Word of God says in the book of Leviticus that the life of the creature is in the blood. That's what it describes. Because when his blood poured out, it describes the fact that he died for us. Because the wages of sin is death. And he paid the wage of death for us because he was the one that was sinless. He had no sin in him. Lord, we ask you to bless this cup. As we drink it together and we remember the great sacrifice that you provided for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Listen, we're going to worship the Lord together. And then we're going to we're going to keep then we're going to hear the word of God. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.
song, How Great You Are. How great you are, oh God. You are greater. You are greater. The blood of Jesus Christ is greater than every problem, than any situation, than any um, place that we need healing. He was speaking about healing in the blood of Jesus. If we need healing this morning, that's something that the Lord, I was over there in my seat and I was like, God, God, heal our hearts, yes, heal Lord. our minds, yes, heal our emotions, yes, heal Lord. our families, yes, heal Lord. our finances. God, heal us, Lord. We need healing. Yes, 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 yes. And there are some things that just can't happen unless it's a move of God. Amen. Just can't happen unless he comes down and he speaks and he moves and he touches Yes. And God, and I know the children are to be dismissed, but I want you to remember that. There's healing in the blood of Jesus. Yes. Yes. There's healing in the blood of Jesus. I don't know what you need this morning. I don't know what you need them to do, but it's in the blood of Jesus. And I want you to remember that. Hallelujah. You may be seated. The children may be dismissed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm coming from the book of Matthew this morning. Matthew starting um, chapter 13, verse 1. The book of Matthew 13 starting in verse 1. The title of my message is Receiving Seed on Good Ground. Receiving Seed on Good Ground. And Pastor Matt, he had asked me to come and to speak um, but I was supposed to speak last week, and I had this message burning inside of me, and I was supposed to teach the kids today. And I said, do you think I could uh, still speak? And he was like, if you got that message burning in you like that, yes, you can, you can come and you can still speak. And I believe that our hearts as believers is that we want to see the seed and the word of God planted in good ground, good soil. Amen. And I believe that this is a church of good ground. Amen. Amen. The scripture reads, The same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the seaside, and a great multitude were gathered together unto him. So he went into a ship and he sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spoke many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. Say wayside. 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 And the fowls came and devoured them up, and some fell upon stony places. Let me hear stony places. Stony places. <laughs> Where they had not, not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns. Say thorns. Thorns. And the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground. Say good ground. good ground. Yeah, good ground. And brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. If you would pray with me this morning. Father, I come before you, Lord, in Jesus' name. God, and I pray, Lord God, that you would come, God, and you would speak to our hearts. Lord, you would show us the condition of our heart, Lord God, and you don't just show us things about ourselves to leave us there. You show us things about ourselves that we may grow in you, that we may grow in grace, that we may move forward in the things of God, that we would be those of good ground that bear forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold, oh God. God, let us be that church that bears a hundredfold, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, that we would be a church that allows you to go deep within our hearts. That we would be a church of roots and depth, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray, Lord God, give us ears to hear what your spirit wants to say to us. And 
anoint us, oh God. Move every distraction yeah. out of the way in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. God, that whatever we walked in these doors with this morning, yeah. God, that you would turn it around yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. God, that you would unlock things in our heart, God, that need to be removed, that need to be changed, God. God, and that you would change us for your glory, oh God. God, I, when we were singing that song, it said, let all heaven declare the glory of the risen Lord. I pray this church would declare the glory of the risen Lord, oh God. God, that we would allow you to do the work, what you, what you must do in our hearts, God. God, that those around us, that our lives would declare the glory of the risen Lord. God, you have your way. Give us eyes to see, Lord God. What you want to show us this morning. Yes. God, and let us not just be hearers of the word of God. Yes. But let us be doers of the word of God. Yes. Let us apply what we learn here today into our daily lives, oh God. That we would be a people that bear fruit yes. and fruit that remains, yes. Lord. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 So I've come to you this morning to talk about three different things. One thing is receiving the seed. Receiving means to be given to pre something that is presented to you. Something that has already been paid for. See, the blood of Jesus, our salvation, has already been paid for. Oh, yes. It's our job as believers in Jesus Christ to receive what he has already paid for. Yes. See, he's already paid for your peace. He's already paid for your joy. He's already paid for your healing. He's already paid for your deliverance. He's already paid for your provision. He's already paid for your freedom. He's already paid for chains to be broken and sin to be removed. He's already paid for that. So it's our job as believers to receive the seed, to receive the word of God, and to believe the word of God. To accept it as an authority. Yes. The Amen. word of God has an authority on it. And what he has done at Calvary, there is an authority. This is a truth. And not only to receive something, but it's to receive something that will support the weight or pressure of. Yes. Amen. See, the pressures of life are not going to go away, my friend. Our trials and our situations are not going to just go away because we are believers. Amen. But the Spirit of God and the Word of God engrafted into your heart is going to be the very thing that supports the weight of the world when it is pressed upon you. Amen. But it's your job, believer. It's my job as a believer to receive that. Yes. Amen. See, and that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. Is that God already... The seed was Jesus Christ. Amen. The seed of the woman. Amen. The word of God, what he has already done. The gospel, the good news, the death and the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is the seed of God. Amen. But he wants to put it in the ground. And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. And I'm not coming from you from a place that I think I got everything together. Because I'll be the first to tell you I do not. But I want us to look at the condition of the ground, the yes. condition of our heart. Amen. Amen. What Amen. is the condition of our heart this morning? Amen. What does the ground of our heart look like this morning? Is our ground a ground that is by the wayside? Is it a stony ground? Is it a thorny ground? Or is it a good ground? And I believe that we're a people in this church that want a good ground. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The scripture reads above, and he was speaking to his people in parables. Parables is a story. If you didn't know what a parable is, a parable is a story using natural means to present a spiritual lesson. Mm -hmm. He is going to use natural means like farming and sowing seed to present a spiritual lesson. And it will explain something pertaining to the kingdom of God. Yes. A parable is something that will uncover, disclose, and reveal truth to you. Mm. Amen. But the word of God says in 1 Corinthians 2.14, 1 
1 Corinthians 2.14, if you could just put it up on the screen. It says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness, meaning this is silly, this is absurd, unto him. Neither can he know them, but they that are spiritually discerning mean that you are able to properly judge and determine and understand. Right, right. Why do I say this? Because if you present a parable to someone who is not a born-again believer, they are going to think it's silliness, that it's an absurdity. What does this even mean? There is no understanding. Why? Because they are not born again of the Spirit. Yes. So what we what I want to present to you today is he is speaking to a people that is born again. Amen. Birth of the Spirit. What does that mean? That means that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. Right, right, that means inside. that now, Amen. Sabrina, you have a heavenly receiver yes. that lives yes. on the inside Amen. of you. Lord. You have a heavenly Hallelujah. receiver that Hallelujah. now can communicate with the living Savior, the risen God. Amen. He can tell you things to come. Yes, he Lord. can lead and he can guide you into all truth. Amen. When we are born of the Spirit, and I want to remind you that this whole the Holy Spirit that resides in you always points to Jesus Christ. Right. He is always going to point you to the truth, to the Word of God. So Nicodemus is one that was a religious leader. And he was a Pharisee. And he was a member of the Sanhedrin. This man, a member of the Sanhedrin, which was a council of God, a council of God that would present the law to the people. Well, Nicodemus, under the cover of night, comes to Jesus. Right, right. And he says, Rabbi. We know that you are a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles unless he has come from God. Jesus answered him and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen. Verily, verily, when, he, when Jesus says that, he means this is very important. You better right. listen up. Right. Right. <laughs> listen up. Verily, verily. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Why am I presenting this to you? Because this morning we are reading a parable about a sower that is sowing seed into ground. And unless you have been born again right. by the Spirit right. of God, Amen. you are going to think this is an absurdity. Amen. You're going to think this is silliness. What are we even talking about? So I want to present to you that Jesus himself said, Nicodemus says to Jesus, how can I be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus says, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. For that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. John 3, 12 says, If I have told you earthly things, and you believe them not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Amen. So I want to present to you this morning the first step into understanding the things of God is to repent of your sin, Amen. to surrender to the Lord, yes. to give your heart to Jesus Christ. And allow the Holy Spirit to come and to reside and to abide and to dwell in you. Amen. And then you too can have this heavenly receiver that you can understand and he will unlock the mysteries of God. Sometimes I remember reading the word of God when I had first gotten saved and I just didn't understand everything. But not understanding shouldn't stop you from seeking the face of God. But it, because if you keep on knocking, the door is going to be open unto you. And I'm not talking to you about natural means. Okay, yes, the Lord wants to move in our natural natural lives, but I'm talking about unlocking the mysteries of God, unlocking the deep things of God, what he wants to expose in our hearts, what he wants to change about us, what he wants to give to you. So if you're here this morning and you are not born again, I plead with you, verily, verily, I say unto you, be born of the spirit. Amen. Give your heart to the Lord. And allow the Lord to do a work in you this.
can get, make a way. He has made a way. And I love Pastor Matt always comes up here and gives little experts and it kind of goes along, excerpts, and it goes along exactly with what I'm talking about. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus, that God raised Jesus from the dead, if you only believe, you will be born again. Amen. You don't have to do six million things. Amen. In order to be born again, all you need to do is to believe Amen. in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I wanted to present that to you because in order to understand what Jesus is talking about, we need a heavenly receiver. Yes. We must Amen. be born of the Spirit. And Jesus here is teaching the multitude that has gathered to hear his word. And the great multitudes were gathered together to him. So he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spoke many things unto them in parables. This was not the first time that the multitude had gathered, and this was not the first time that Jesus had spoke in parables. He had spoken to them before in parables about the good fruit and the corrupt fruit. He had spoken to them before about the tares and the wheats. He had spoken to them before about the sheep and the goats. He had spoken to them about the sign of Jonah. He had spoken about to them about the pearl of great price. He had spoken to them about the hidden treasure and the net. He had spoken to them in this way. Now, I want to tell you this. God speaks to us in all kinds of different ways. Right. The ways that he speaks to Naya might not be the same way that he's speaking to Danielle and the same way he's speaking to Amanda and the same way he's speaking to Brother Gowdy. But Jesus has your phone number, and he knows exactly how to speak to you and exactly how to get a hold of your heart. Amen. And yesterday we were at the picnic, and we had, we had a great time at the picnic yesterday. If you didn't get to come, I implore you to come next time. Because yes. even though it was raining out, we really did have great fellowship. Yes. But there was yes. something that happened at the picnic, and the Lord began to speak to me. And he began to use Robert. And it's quite like a parable. So we all had our dogs there. And me and Naya had Titan and Samson. And if you know anything about Titan and Samson, you can't let them off the leash. <laughs> you let those dogs off the leash, they are gone with the quickness. Yeah. Well, thank God for Pastor Matt. He raised his dog right, and Tiki <laughs> can run around, and she could stay right in the midst. Um, and Sierra's dog, Tiki. And he let the dog off of the leash. Well, the dog starts running back and forth and back and forth like she is free. She's yeah. like, yeah, buddy. But my dogs are still on leashes. Right. And they're trying to understand why we're not letting them off the leash. Mm -hmm. But we know that if we let right. our dogs yeah. off the leash, they're going to be gone. And I'm going to be crying and we're going to have to go find them. Well, Tiki's running back and forth and back and forth like I'm free. And she's like teasing them. <laughs> and now my dogs... Titan gets real high and he starts trying to like pat her around and Samson just starts barking. Well, Robert goes, man, look at Tiki running in freedom. <laughs> and all I could see, though, wow. was when we're free wow. and the Lord has set us yes, free. Yes. Samson and Titan was like the enemy <laughs> trying to pat her around, trying to get back at her. And Sam Samson began to bark. See, the enemy will begin to bark and try to intimidate us. And then Pastor Matt comes on and comes along and puts her back in the harness. And this dog scoots out of the harness and starts running back around. Like, you're not going to lock me back up. You're not going to bind me back up. I am free. I am free. I am free. And the Lord began to speak to me because that's how we are. He has set yeah. us free. Yeah. And the enemy will taunt us. The enemy will tease us. The enemy will try to intimidate us and bring on fear and try to make us feel like we are going to be bound back up by shackles and chain, chains again. But guess what? We are free. We are free. We are free. The blood of Jesus has made us free. So I just have ears to 
So he's speaking to them and he says in um, verse 3, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And the fowls came and devoured them up. The first seed that was sown was by the wayside. Behold means low in the Greek. This means this is imperative. This is an expression and an instruction. It's advice. It's a command. Mm -hmm. he, he's saying, listen, Amen. this is very important. I want you to hear this. And he's not talking to unbelievers. He's speaking to believers. Amen. He's speaking to us. Amen. And he's saying, this is important. I'm about to give you heavenly instruction. I'm about to give you heavenly advice. Amen. And this is a command that you must hear. Amen. A sower. So I see the sower as a preacher or a teacher of the word of God. But I also see the sower as the Holy Spirit. Yeah, man. He is the greatest teacher. Yeah. He is the greatest preacher. He is the greatest. So the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ himself, has come to sow. Amen. Sow means an idea that is being extended to you. So God's word, God's truth, is being extended to you. When you come to receive a gift, someone extends that gift out to you, and you have to take it out of their hands, and you have to receive that gift. Amen. Well, you can come into the household of God. You can sit with the word of God. You can listen to sermons. You can seek the face of God yourself. And the Holy Spirit has begun, wants to begin to sow the engrafted word of God into your heart. Amen. Well, when he begins to sow the word of God into man's heart, it is your job as a believer to receive it. Amen. But how are we going to receive it? It says the sower goes forth. I want to, that word forth means that this is a forward action. Jesus is always trying to move us forward in the things of God. He doesn't ever want us to go backwards. He doesn't ever want us to stay stagnant. The sower's job is to get you through the word of God to move forward in the things of God, to Amen. grow in the things of God, to mature, mature in your walk and your relationship Amen. with the Lord. We cannot stay babies forever. Amen. We cannot stay drinking milk forever. Amen. He wants to mature men and women of God that are willing to allow the word of God to demonstrate power in our lives Amen. and to change our lives. Yes. And he goes forth to sow. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. Amen. If you are not spending time in your word or in God's presence, then I just I want to tell you we are not going to grow. Amen. We are not going to grow. And sometimes we wonder why our faith is being shaken. Well, maybe we haven't been putting eating the word of God right. to make right. us stronger, right. to support what we have been going through. Amen. I know there have been times in my walk well, I, where I'm going through something and I look back and I'm like, what is going on? And then I realize I've been focused on building my business, or I'm just going to get real, okay? Building my business. I've been fo focusing on other things in life. And then all of a sudden I look and I'm like, When's the last time I actually spent quality time with the Lord? I'm not talking about fly-by prayers. Right. I'm not talking about waking up in the morning and there's nothing wrong putting on worship music and driving in the car to work and listening to a sermon or whatever the case may be. We can get it wherever we can get it, okay? But I'm talking about quality time with the Lord in a secret place right, where we right, seek the right, face of right, God, where we ask for him to reveal truth to us, where we ask for him to change us, yeah, yeah, where we spend time in his word and devour his word and try to figure out, God, what are you trying to say to me about what's going on in my life? Yes, Lord. The word of God is living. Yes, Lord. It will change you. The word of God is life. <laughs> if you feel like you've been dead on the inside, get on, get on your face with the word of God Amen. and allow it to speak to your heart. Well, this, what happens here is the seed falls by the wayside and the fowls come and devour them up. See, God is always trying. 
truth to us. He will never leave you in a darkened state. He will always let his light, light shine forth. But it is our job to receive the light of the gospel. It is our job to receive the light which he has shown you. And the light rejected is light removed. Amen. And we have been rejecting the truth. And I'm not just talking about Jesus Christ and you receiving him as Savior. He, he speaks to us in little aspects in our lives. In every crack and crevice of our heart. Right. And he will tell you, this is right, that's wrong, this is good, that's not. And sometimes we reject the truth that is being revealed in our hearts. And when we do, it is more like removed. See, we wonder sometimes why we feel dry or why we feel like we're not receiving from God. Well, maybe we need to go back to the first place where he started to deal with our hearts about something and surrender that thing to him. Amen. The seed falls by the wayside. And this wayside, and I love the Lord because he never leaves us without an explanation. Because if you follow this uh, chapter, you can go to Matthew 13, verse 18. And he explains it. He doesn't just say, okay, well, seed files by the wayside, and they come and devour it. Figure it out yourself. No, he says, I'm going to explain this to you. And I love that about the Lord. Matthew 13, verse 19, it says, When anyone heareth the, the word of the kingdom of God and understands it not, then comes the wicked one and catches away that which was sown into his heart, this is he which receiveth the seed by the wayside. He said, they understand it not. This does not mean that they are incapable of understanding. This doesn't mean that they just don't get it and Jesus is just looking down and saying, she's never going to get it. She's just never going to get it. She's, she's without understanding. No, this is someone who... Just doesn't really care. Come on. Wow. Amen. This is someone, it's not enough to just attend church, but just they want to really understand the Word of God. Amen. See, it's not enough, church, to just come sit here and Amen. hear the Word of God right. and let it go Amen. in one ear and wow. out the other Amen. and walk out. Amen. Well, praise God. See you next Sunday. Yeah. No, he, this is a people right here that don't really care to understand the word of God. And then the fowl of the air, the wicked one, now comes to devour that which is sown by the wayside. And I began to think about this. I went through my closet recently, and there's a lot of clothes in there that I haven't really seen in a really long time. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Amen. Man, it's been a long time. And I was just thinking when I was studying this, those clothes were by the wayside. I wasn't paying much attention to that. Right. I wasn't paying. If you, if you walk into a room and somebody's on the other side of the room that you don't really want to pay much attention to, you walk by the wayside. Amen. You don't want anything to really do with it. Right. You're still in the same room. Amen. See, you can still be in the same room with Jesus Christ. You can still be in the same room with the Word of God, but you can be allowing the seed of the Word of God to just be by the wayside. Amen. You're not very attentive. You really could care less. I could really care less. It's by the wayside. It's not of importance to me. It's enough that I'm saved. That's good. It's by the wayside. And what happens is, is my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You can have a lot of knowledge with no understanding. Amen. You can be puffed up in the way what you know of the scripture. Well, I was raised in church. I grew up. I know the scripture. Mm. Come on. I didn't really grow up in church, but I'm just giving you an example. <laughs> I'm, I can be like that now. I went to Jimmy Swagger Bible College. Right, right. I know the scripture. Right, right. It's not enough to know the scripture. Right, right, right. Because this says that the fowl of the air comes, the wicked one comes, and devours, gulps down, right. does away with. Amen. You're not going to be able to hold on so long if you don't find the word of God of any importance. Amen. The fowl of the air is going to come and close in on you. Right. Right. And that's why, because a lot of times we, don't, we doubt, we have unbelief in our heart, and we really could, 
could care less. Something that you don't believe in, you find of no importance. That's right. Amen. That's good. Or something maybe we just don't want to deal with. Amen. We'll just cast out by the wayside. I'll deal with that, you know, next week. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden we end up in a trial that's rocking our world and we find our faith at test. Amen. And we don't know if we can hold on anymore. Right. Right. Why? Because we need the engrafted word of God to yes. fall upon good ground. Yes. Amen. So Matthew 13, 7 says, and some, oh, I'm sorry. Matthew 13, 5 says, some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up, and because they had no depth, depthness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. The seed fell upon stony places. This is a person that has gotten just lackadaisical in their Christian life. They have got complacent, we have got complacent, and we have gotten comfortable, and there's just no hunger anymore. There's just no desire anymore. It's okay for me to kind of just go through the motions, and I, I just don't apply the things of God to my life outside of these four walls any longer. It's just within the church walls. See, but God wants to produce such a... A change in your life that it's demonstrated when you're at home when no one is looking. Amen. See, that's where maturity right. comes from. Right. Maturity is when you know, you know that the Lord's eyes are upon you and you know that you're going to allow him to do the work in your heart. See, there's some things in our lives and in our minds and in our hearts that no one else knows about. And are we allowing the word of God to demonstrate its power in us and produce a change? Amen. But some things we become hard towards That's the right. things of God. Amen. I will go this far and no further. Mm -hmm. And I think my mom's watching today and she'll appreciate this. So we're Italian mm -hmm. and we like spaghetti. Yes. And, I was <laughs> and I was thinking about this. If you're, if you're like that, when you cook the spaghetti, you take the spaghetti out of the pot and you throw it against the wall, or you throw it against the ceiling, or you throw it against the fridge. You throw it against something hard of hard surface. And I was thinking about the stony ground. And I was thinking about how when the spaghetti is still hard, it bounces off the wall or off the ceiling or off the fridge. It's not pliable. It's not moldable. It's not shapeable. It, you can't eat it. Okay, it's not palatable. So when we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to work within us, we become hard like that. Right, right, we're not palatable. Right, right. We're not showing the character of Christ. We're not allowing the word of God to change us. We're not being shapeable, moldable. We're not. It's stony ground. Yeah. But God wants the word of God to stick so deep in your heart that it begins to mold you and shape you. And when you hit that wall, and it sticks, yeah. then it's time. It's time to eat. It is time to eat. But I was thinking about that, that that's what God wants to allow the Holy Spirit to change our character, to change the way that we think, to change the way that we look at things. But if we allow the Word of God to be received on stony places, it won't go deep. So once again, Jesus explains it in verse 20. But he receives the seed in stony places. And the same is he that heareth the word of God. And it says, Anon, which means immediately receives it with joy. Have you ever been to church before? And you, that, that message was great. That worship was great. That prayer time was great. You feel pumped up. Your spiritual muscles are ready to go. When you go to the gym, we call it the pump. When you're lifting weights and lifting weights and lifting weights and you have a pump in your muscles because the blood is circulating through your muscles, well, at the gym it's like that. But then we come into the household of God and we do the same thing. We, we, we're worshiping the Lord. We're dancing. We're praising. We're listening to the message. We're getting it. We are pumped up. But then we walk out of the household of God. And he says in verse 21, he says, he has no root. In himself, but endures for a while. For when tribulation and persecution arises because of the word, 
By and by, he is offended. No root. What is a root? A root is a part of a plant that attaches to the ground for support. It is your support system. The word of God should be that which supports every move that you make, every thought that you think. The word of God shall nourish your spirit, shall strengthen you in times of tribulation. That he, he says, he endures for a moment. Our faith in Jesus Christ should get us through the hardest of times. Amen. This isn't just a fairy tale. We serve a risen Savior. We serve a living God. I have gotten through some hard times by the grace of God and the peace of God just comforting me. Or the keeping power of God. God has kept me. Amen. Amen. Throughout the years. And this person is a person who endures only for a season. A temporary endurance. See, I want to tell you this. You can, in your own self, endure for a moment. But God is going to allow you to walk through some things that you need the Spirit of God to endure through. Yes, yes Lord. That you need the Word of God to Amen. endure through. Amen. Amen. A, he is producing a stamina and an endurance in his people. Yes. The Bible says that it's only going to wax worse. <laughs> and the times are only going to get worse. And the evil is only going to get worse. Right. And I encourage you parents, grandparents, and leaders to show your children what it means to endure. What it means to lay hold of the things of God. What it means for mama or grandpa or granddaddy or daddy to stand on the word of God and to believe in the word of God. And to endure through season after season after season after season. And I'm not just talking about, listen... We are going to struggle. We are going to stumble. And things are going to happen. But I don't, it says the righteous fall and get back up. And not in the righteousness of your own strength. If you see yourself as one of these people that fall by the wayside, that did not think the word of God of some importance, then I encourage you today. There is hope in Jesus and to get back up. If you are one that has been offended by the word of God because it's been too harsh or it's been too hard or you just don't understand, well, I encourage you today to seek the face of God, to get back up and allow the Holy Spirit to make your heart soft and pliable again. Amen. The same way you have received Christ Jesus, so walk in him, endure in him. Sometimes, listen, I've been one of these people who I feel like it's just too hard. The race is just too long. The storm is just too rough. The trial, the fire is just too hot. God, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I've said that to the Lord. I think I probably said it to Pastor Matt or Robert or Naya. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I don't know if I can withstand this. But the supernatural keeping power of God will sustain you. He will sustain you. And that endurance means, that doesn't mean that you are God, that he's going to remove the trial. Amen. That means that you're going to remain under that trial. Amen. But sustained by the power of God. You want to make, we, we want to mature as a body of Christ and get roots as a body of Christ. That's how we do it. See that, that it grows deep within the storm of what's going on in your life. Amen. That we that we can look back and say he's been faithful. Amen. He's been faithful. Amen. He's been faithful. Yes, he's been faithful. Amen. Every time he's been faithful. Amen. He's been yes, faithful. Lord. Why? Because I've endured. He's been faithful. His word came to pass. Why? Because I held on. He's been faithful. Yes, but the only way that you're going to see that is if you allow the word of God to sustain you and stand true and you continue to believe Amen. Matthew 13 7 says this is the thorny ground and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprung up and choked them Jesus explains this in verse thir Matthew 13 verse 22 he was he says he also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches 
choke the word and he become unfruitful. I'm just going to put myself out there. I think that this is where I find myself a lot of the time. Okay? I'm not, listen, I love the, the Lord. I absolutely love the Lord and I love the word of God. And I believe that out of all of these grounds, see, I want the word of God. So I'm not letting it fall by the wayside. Amen. And I want roots. I want to be able to endure and I want to be able to stand. For some reason, these thorns are the ones that always kind of trip me up a little bit. <laughs> Right, right. The cares. Yeah. Come on. It's the cares. Yeah. The world. Uh -huh. you, you know, Pastor Matt said it this morning, and I was going to mention it, is that we tend to focus on our trial or focus on our situation. I'm not just talking about those outward things of the world tripping us up. I'm talking about the cares yeah. of this world. Yeah. I'm talking about whether or not I got enough money to pay my bills. Right, right. Man. Okay, and that overwhelms. I'm talking about what your future holds and worrying about maybe what your future might look like. I'm talking about the cares of this world. Things that, okay, am I going to get that job? Am I not going to get that job? I'm talking about, well, that person at church wasn't talking to me today. I wonder, you know, the cares and the things that go on in our minds. I'm talking about things that begin relationship issues, family issues, right. the cares right. of this world right. that begin to weigh on us and we, we don't understand. And all of a sudden, it completely overwhelms mm. our whole life. Yeah. Amen. And it chokes out right. that yes. very word that the Lord spoke to your heart mm. this morning. Wow. Amen. Yeah. This is the one I end up in a lot. Mm. And I want the good ground. But you know what? You got to take out some of those thorns in order to get some good ground, I guess. So it says there is a sowing and there is a receiving of the word of God. See, still in areas of our lives, we can the enemy can get a foothold, can bring forth fear, can bring forth depression, anxiety, can bring forth, he gets a foothold. Where we're so overwhelmed that our eyes are only on the care and no longer on how great our God is. Amen. And you begin to feel suffocated. Yes. Right. We begin to feel like we can't go on. Yeah. Or what about the deceitful riches of this world? I don't know about you, and I've talked to some, some other people before, but I have looked, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Amen. But... There are times in my life that I see people that are not saved, very prosperous mm -hmm. in the world sense. Yes. Yes, and you can look at it and you can be like, why do I, am I over here feeling like I'm dying <laughs> for God right. and living for God? And that this person's got this, that, this, that, da, 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 and everything seems so great. Right. Right. But it's an illusion. Amen. <laughs> it's Come a trick of the enemy yeah. to get you to believe. God has forsaken you right, and that right, he has right. not given you good things. Right, right, right. Amen. And I've been there. Yes, Lord. I, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of yes, my God yes, than to dwell yes, in the yes, tents of the wicked. But those things come up. Success, money. One of the things I tell them, I, I run my own business and I always, I, the, the thing I hate the most about running my own business is the money. I hate it. I don't want to deal with it. I don't, I don't want to charge nobody anything. Now it's like, Angela, you run a business. I'm like, I know. Like, but I just, the, the money is just one of those things that I feel like it's always something that you're struggling with or dealing with or it's a family issue or it's a something that money can just overwhelm you. Fame, success, right, position. Right. Come on now. Come Why's on. he got that position? Right. Doesn't my boss know how faithful I have been? Help us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Doesn't he know I'm worth more than I'm getting paid? Come on now. Yes, Lord. Don't they know? Why's he got that? Why's she get that man? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Why, Lord? 
Why? And it becomes to overwhelm. That trial becomes to overwhelm you. And Naya preached this message to the kids, and I just thought it fitting for right here. It says, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Amen. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Mm. Think about that. There has been things in my life where I have been on the brink of walking away from the Lord. There has been trials in my life or things that I had been waiting to see happen in my life um, that it has pushed me into a dark place with the Lord. And even though the Lord, if we make our bed in heaven, he is still there. I mean, we make our bed in hell, he is still there. But it has been to the point where, I, what would I exchange my soul for? Oh, mm -hmm. God, help us on, not now. to exchange That's our right. soul yeah. for yeah. anything yeah. that this world yeah. has to yeah. 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 Help yeah. us not to allow that bitterness yeah. and that jealousy yeah. and that envy yeah. and, and that unforgiveness and that hatred towards that person. See, it doesn't just have to be outward things. It could be things in us that God is dealing with that we exchange our soul for. Amen. When God just wants to set you free. Yeah. You forgive that person, he'll set you free. Amen. You let that thing go, that hatred, that control, you think you're controlling this. No, let it go so he can set you free. Yeah. Don't exchange your soul for yeah. and sin that lasts a moment. I have lived in the depths of sin. I have tried everything and probably done everything and got the t-shirt to prove it. And none of it, right. none of it, none of it brought me anywhere in my life. It only stole, robbed, killed, yeah. and destroyed yeah. my life. Amen. Yes, it felt good for a moment. Yes, it did. But when I woke up in the morning, the empty void that I was trying to fill with the riches of this world or the deceitfulness of the world was still there. Right. Right. Didn't matter how much money I had or didn't have. Amen. Didn't matter what position I had in my job or didn't have. It didn't matter how much drugs I did or didn't do. It didn't matter where I lived or who I lived with or who I didn't have in my life. That void was still there without the Lord. Yeah. 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 It was still there without the world. The Lord, excuse me, Amen. not the world. <laughs> but the world will make you believe that you need these things. Amen. You need these things to survive. No, you just need the Lord. Amen. We just need the Lord. And that word choke means to completely strangle, drown, or crowd. The deceitfulness of this world, the cares of this world, will choke your relationship with the Lord. Amen. It will allow other things to become so important that you be feel suffocated. Mm -hmm. It could be so simple as a good care. Like, I'm talking about your children maybe being saved or a loved one being healed. Things that put burdens on our hearts. Those cares. Right. Those cares can so suffocate and overwhelm our relationship Amen. with the Lord because Amen. you were never meant to bear it alone. Amen. 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 You were meant to give it over to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. You were meant to receive what he did on Calvary, yes. and you were meant to surrender it to him yes. so that he can deal with it, so he can yes. fix it, so he can change it. Yes. See, I'm talking about good things, too. There's things in the Lord, there's family members we might have been praying for. There's things that we want to see God do. We want to see this church filled. Yes, we want to, yes. There's things we want to see happen in Patterson. But if you, if we even get our, our mind and our heart so focused on ministry, right, right. we can lose sight of what God's trying to do in us. Amen. I'm talking about cares that it can be good things too. That we even surrender over to him. That word choke also meant crowded. You ever been so crowded in your emotions? Yeah. That you can't see clear. <laughs> right. Yes. Crowded, our emotions are so loud that we just can't hear the voice of God. Right, right. See, as we begin to surrender those thoughts to Him, God will begin to make 
a profitable ground. As we begin to surrender those things to him, God wants to make a profitable people. Amen. I'm talking about profitable in the things of the spirit. Matthew 13, verse 8 says, now this is where we want to be. This is exactly where we want to be. Yes. But other fell into good ground, hallelujah, and brought Amen. forth fruit. Some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. I pray that all the time. That is a prayer that I pray, God, give me ears to hear what your spirit has to say to me. And that's not just something in the church house. I'm talking about every single day of my life. God, give me ears to hear what your spirit has to say. And not just the things that I want to hear. Because God's not always saying what we want to hear. Amen. That's right. That's Amen. He's saying the things that are profitable for his kingdom and for his yeah. glory. Amen. He wants to use you as a demonstration of his glory. So if that means you need to go say sorry to sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so so his kingdom can be revealed through you, then go do it. That's good. If he's been telling you to go show up at so-and-so's house because you haven't seen them in church, then you better go show up and humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. If God's telling you to serve and not be served, Jesus came to serve. God can tell you to do a lot of things. I, I used to say this a lot when I was in New Jersey in the ministry. I was in in New Jersey, and Naya's mom, she was the leader of the ministry, and she would always say, Paul said, to, it better to be cheated and to make it right with your brother or sister mm. than to find yourself basically all puffed up and try wow. to prove that you're right. Wow. Amen. And man. Amen. She was serious about this business, and before chapel services, we would have to go around all the people we felt like we wronged. Yeah. And nobody's telling you to do that in here. But it actually taught me a very valuable lesson about making it right with people. Yeah. Amen. And God would always convict me. Right. I, I mean, and I would I would throw a tantrum like a two year old with the Lord. I'd be like, but why do I always gotta be the one to make it right, Lord? I always gotta say I'm sorry. I'm not even the one that was wrong, Lord. Why do I gotta go tell them that? Why do I gotta go say, Lord, why me? It's always me, Lord. It's never them. Amen. They never come back and say anything. They're sorry. Right. And <laughs> the Lord would always humble me. Yeah. And he would always like be Angela, go make it right. It better yeah. to be cheated. Yeah. It better to be cheated and to show my spirit, to show my glory, to show my compassion, to show my kindness, to show my humility, than it is for you to prove that you're right. Come on, wow. you're right. Amen. Oh my gosh, he did such a work in my heart That's with good, that. Right there. But Amen. but we need it. Yeah. Because yeah. we are a prideful, puffed yeah, up, right. self-righteous, stubborn. Yeah. People. Amen. Amen. God help us. Yes, Lord. Because God, it's not about us. It's not about you. It's yes. not about me. It's about His glory. Yes. Amen. It's about His kingdom. Amen. And God wants to demonstrate that in our lives, in this church. He's going to use the person sitting next to you. He's going to use me. He's going to use Pastor Matt. <laughs> He's going to use us to sharpen each other and to show his character within us. And that good ground, it says, the one who has ears to hear, let him hear. He begins to explain it in verse 23. But he that receives seed into good ground is he that hears the word and understands it. Remember, that word understands isn't about whether or not it's about the hunger for the understanding. Okay? So we hear the word and we hunger. We hunger to understand the word of God. And those that hunger to understand the word of God bear fruit. Amen. Bear fruit. Amen. That's what Jesus is about. Bearing fruit. Fruit yes, yes. in Amen. his people, demonstrating Lord. his righteous 
character yes, in Lord. his people, yes, his Lord. righteousness being revealed in his people, yes, his peace. In the storm, being revealed yes, in his people, Hallelujah. his joy, when everybody else is falling apart, being revealed in his people, his goodness, yes, his Lord. goodness to that person who has been nasty to you, yes, being Lord. revealed through you yes, in Lord. his people, Amen. his for, yes, forgiveness. Well, yes, I've forgiven Lord. them 600 times. Forgive them again. Yes. Yes. I have been merciful, Lord. It's time for me to stand their ground. No, be compassionate again. Be merciful again. Suffer long in relationships again. Endure again. Keep going. And he says, these people will bear fruit. Fruit of purity. Do you, f- fruit of sacrifice. You know, I'm not to puff up Pastor Matt's hat and head or anything, but I watched the, what's your name, ma'am? Crystal. Crystal. I watched Crystal walk in, and she came and she sat down, and Pastor Matt turned around and he went, and he handed her his communion cup. And I'm not saying that to be like, oh, Pastor Matt, but it showed me his heart for the people. Amen. And right there in my seat, it was like my spirit left. Because it's in this, you never know who's watching you. Amen. You never know what's going to touch someone's Amen. heart Amen. for them to see the character of Christ. Amen. See, Pastor Matt's a pastor. He could have held on to his communion cup and, you know, had somebody in the back that was serving them bring it to her. But I seen a pastor's right. heart right. come right. to right. serve, right. Right. come right. to give. Right. Right. And that's what we should be showing others. Yeah. That's the ground that we want right. the word of God to fall upon and it to demonstrate. And I want to encourage you in this. He says some 30, some 60, some 100. And I'm going to be closing some a hundredfold. As we keep believing and we keep trusting and we keep going and we keep enduring and we keep allowing the word of God to change us, it's going to keep, you're going to keep going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and giving yourself over to him more and more and more and more. Yeah, and he's going to bear fruit in your life yeah, and in this church amen. more and more and more and more. And this fruit that he bears in you is going to be a fruit that remains, that helps you to endure the amen. test of time. Amen. And he said, those who endure till the end Hallelujah. shall be saved. Amen. Amen. Naya, if you would come up, I ask you please to stand with me. Hallelujah, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah Jesus. Hallelujah. I know this wasn't a shouting, swinging from the chandeliers type of message, but I want to encourage you this morning. Let us be a church that that is prostrate before the Lord, that allows uh, the word of God to bring forth fruit, that we would be a church that endures. And if you feel like, one, we've been letting the seed fall by the wayside. And we need to get back on the right track with the Lord. If we feel like we've been the ground that it's, there's no depth really. I've just been letting it, I've been offended by some things. I've been offended by maybe some things the Lord has shown me or done. Or I've been offended by maybe the word of God that has come forth from the pulpit. And I just kind of. I get a little excited about the word of God, but then when trials come, I can't hold on, God. I I just doubt. Or if we're the ones who the cares of this world have been choking out the word of God that he has spoken to you for years because you've been holding on for some years and and you've been believing him for some years, but all of a sudden doubt and unbelief come in and try to choke out the word that he has spoken to you 20 years ago and you haven't seen it come to pass yet. But God, I believe God, he wants to bring it to pass in your life. Hallelujah. And if you want to be that good ground, forget those 
those other grounds. <laughs> Forget the other grounds. If you want that good ground, if you want him to produce a demonstration of his spirit in your life, to reveal himself in you and through you, and you be a hundredfold Christian, that we would be a hundredfold Christians in here, that we would see the spirit. 